Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday to you. Good morning to um, Peggy and Stacy, Sherry, Teresa, uh, Leslie, Jan and Larry, Barb, Charlotte, and Paul. Paul's playing hooky from church today. He's actually not feeling well. So definitely keep Paul in your prayers. All right. So we are we have a very short reading today. We we have a we have our reading in Lion Bites, and then our reading in um, the scripture today. We are to that place where we finished up Judges. We're finishing up Second Chronicles, and so right now we are just reading clumps of uh, Second Chronicles until we finish here in um, just about another week or so. And so a week from today, uh, I believe it's a week from today. Yep. A week from today, we start reading the Bible chronologically. And um, if you need me to um, to tell you again what those two reading, the two things are that we are going to, let me grab them. Um, when we start reading the Bible chronologically, we'll be in this chronological Life Application Bible. It's the 2012 print, um, and it's the um, Life Application New Living Translation. So this is what I'll be reading from. And then um, the book that we'll start as soon as we finish Lion Bites, which is just another few days from now, we'll start reading in the um, Brother Lawrence's The Practice of the Presence of God. And this is a really awesome uh little book um brother lawrence lived between 6 uh, 1611 and 1691 sorry my i have a cough drop in my mouth um and um he was a car he was a cook in a carmelite monastery in paris and he's just got some great words of wisdom for us um, and how to live a life that's constantly in the presence of God, even in the midst of our day-to-day -day activities. So I think you'll enjoy that if you haven't already read it. Um, and good, Leslie, you've already got yours, your books. That's awesome. I'm excited about it too. And good morning, Joanne. Good to have you on this morning with us. Okay, so Let's start with Lion Bites, day 360. And the title of this is How to Be a New Covenant Warrior. And the scripture is Hebrews 11, 39 through 40. And it says, these were all commended for their faith. 
Yet none of them received what had been promised, since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. The letter to the Hebrews was written to Jews who had become believers in Christ. They had, be, they had come out of Judaism, but not fully. They had come into Christianity, but not fully. And so this letter needed to be written to show its readers that even the finest acts and deeds of the old religion must be left behind. Christ is all we need. We must run the race, looking to him alone as our Savior and the way. The word better occurs 12 times in the letter. Christ is better than the angels, better than Moses, better than Joshua, better than Aaron. In Jesus, we have a better sacrifice than bulls and goats. He has made a better covenant than the old covenant. Better, better, better. It's all better for us. It's the best. The new way in Christ is better than the old way for Christ Jesus, the Messiah, is so much better than any previous leader, deliverer, hero, king, prophet, or priest. Below are six of the twelve things described as better or superior. Meditating on these will open our eyes afresh to the newness of the new covenant and the joy and the freedom of living under the best covenant in the whole Bible. From Hebrews 1, 3 through 4, it says, After making purification for sins, he, Jesus, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he inherited is more excellent than theirs. Hebrews 7, 7, Though we speak in this way, yet in your case, beloved, we feel sure of better things, things that belong to salvation. It is beyond dispute that the inferior is blessed by the superior. Hebrews seven eighteen through 19 A former commandment is set aside because of its weakness and uselessness, for the law made nothing perfect. But on the other hand, a better hope is introduced, through which we draw near to God. Hebrews seven twenty two. This makes Jesus the guarantor, guarantor of a better covenant. And then Hebrews 8, 6, as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is as much more excellent than the old as the covenant he meditates is better, since it is enacted with his better promises. Read and meditate on all the things that are better in Jesus. Ask the Holy Spirit to shine his light on the areas of your life that are based on an inferior religious mindset and not that of the better best new covenant. So as I was reading this, one thing that came to mind for me was um, the the religious aspect of things. You know, we, um, we sometimes are very grounded in our religious acts. You know, there are people who will come to church just because it's what they were taught to do. It's what they've always done, but there's no real life that's given um, to them because they don't accept um, something that's better than their religion, than their routine. Um, and so, you know, God has so much more for us and it comes through Jesus Christ. And so, you know, as the world changes, uh, you know, I'm thinking about this, about how, um, you know, the world changes all the time. And sometimes we just get stuck in these places and we settle for something that is um, okay, when there's so much, there's something that's so much better for us. Um, I think about the things that I hear people say. You know, they don't, they, they don't want to um, sing newer songs, for example, because, and people are very critical of it. Well, it's just a few words, and there's no real meaning or in, in any real theology like the old hymns are. Well, I beg to differ with you. <laughs> Because a lot of times those praise songs, they come right straight out of scripture and they are meant for the purpose of being simple so that we can praise the Lord. So that our attention is not on all of the many words that are in hymns and the, and the hymns are great. Don't get me wrong. I love the hymns. I love the message that they say. But the praise songs are for a different purpose. They're more of a prayer. And they're simple so that you can get your mind on the Lord and not have to be thinking about all of the many words that comes from it. Some people will never accept that. 
They, they believe in their heart of hearts. No, nope, they're no good. They're too simple. They're stupid. We don't like the instruments. You know, they've, they've, they've dug in their heels and they'll never be open to that. I feel sorry for folks like that. I feel sorry for us any time that we dig in on anything and we um, are not, and, and we're not willing to learn at, or even willing to uh, some people would say that, well, you know, you're not always real flexible on the scripture. Well, I'm not going to be flexible on the scripture because that's God's word. And I'm standing on the truth in that. But I am open to how that um, how that scripture shapes my life and how it helps me to be a better person. And, and, and in turn, how to be more accepting of other people because we're all in the same boat. We all are sinners. So, you know, there's certain things that, um, that are non-negotiable. And then there are things that always have to be negotiable, um, that we, that we have to always be learning and growing. Um, and, um, and God in turn with our being open and willing to learn new things, then he's able to, to lead us to these places where we can experience more. We can experience the very best of Jesus Christ. Not the, the best of what religion has to offer, but the best of Jesus, of a transformative Savior who lives in our hearts and who shapes our lives and who sets us free in ways that maybe we have never thought we could be free before. So, that's something to chew on. Um, you know, it can be uh, taken all different sorts of ways, but I'm I am uh, choosing today to take it as a, as a message um, from God that says, "Hey, you know, be open, be open, be be stand true to my word, stand on my word." But my word is Jesus Christ, and so let Him guide you. And let him change you so that you are constantly becoming more free in me. Oh, Lord, let our souls rise up to meet you just as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen and amen. Okay, so our only reading in scripture today is in Second Chronicles, and we're reading just a section, a small section of um, chapter 27, starting in verse 1, going through verse 9. So uh, this will be a very short passage, um, but there's some things to talk about. It says, Jotham was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 16 years. His mother was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. Jotham did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, he did everything his father Uzziah had done, except that Jotham did not sin by entering the temple of the Lord. But the people continued in their corrupt ways. Jotham rebuilt the upper gate of the temple of the Lord. He also did extensive rebuilding on the wall at the hill of Ophel. He built towns in the hill country of Judah and constructed fortresses and towers in the wooded areas. Jotham went to war against the Ammonites and conquered them. Over the next three years, he received them and he received from them an annual tribute of 75 pounds of silver, 50, 7,500 pounds of silver, sorry, 50,000 bushels of wheat, 50,000 bushels of barley. King Jotham became powerful because he was careful to live in obedience to the Lord his God. The rest of the events of Jotham's reign, including all of the, his wars and other activities, are recorded in the book of kings of Israel and Judah. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. When Jotham died, he was buried in the city of David, and his son Ahaz became the next king. Okay, so the thing that I want to point out, and I think this is really important, at least it is to me. Um, and I'm hoping that it, it is to you as well, is Jotham conducted himself in a way that was pleasing in the sight of the Lord. He had had the influence of Uzziah, his father, um, who, who really kind of had a heart for the Lord, but he let his pride get in the way and he went in and he started doing things that were not his job to do. Um, he started going in and doing priestly duties, and that was not his his job to do. And so 
Um, so it didn't end well for Uzziah. But Jotham, he had learned enough probably from watching his father's um, successes and failures. And um, and he, he had it in his heart that he was going to be faithful to the Lord. And he was, but here, here's the thing that happened. Even though he was faithful and even though he was doing everything that he knew to do, everything that he knew to be right, the people were corrupt and they did not follow him. So how many of us have been in, in um, positions before where we've tried to lead people, maybe it's our family, maybe it's our children, maybe it's people in the church for those of us who are pastors, maybe it's those in the workplace, maybe it's those that have been part of a nonprofit organization. You you try to lead people in the right way, but if their hearts are not tuned into Jesus, then um, then they are are lost. Um, and they go on about their business and they want to do things their own way. And, um, and there's, there's nothing that we can do about that except for pray for them. Pray that, that, uh, God will change their heart. Pray that they will come to understand that they must be submitted to God. Um, oh, that the obedience is what, uh, brings about that fruitfulness and that freedom uh, you know, we, we call it surrender or submission, which has a real negative connotation in our culture. It, it, it is almost like it's a sign of weakness or defeat, but it's not when it comes to the kingdom of God. Um, it, it means victory. It means freedom. It means having a life worth living because we have submitted ourselves to the Lord. But that doesn't mean that everything's going to go dandy in our life. It doesn't mean that those that we try to lead to Christ are going to follow. Um, it doesn't mean that their lives are going to be transformed because each and every one of us have to make that own our own personal decision about that. And so we have the responsibility to pray. We have the responsibility to lead in a way that is godly, that is pleasing in the sight of the Lord, regardless of what other people do. And it can, you know, I know for me, when I've seen people walk away um, you know, being a children's pastor, I've seen that quite a bit with the generation that are just coming into adulthood now. They've walked away from the faith, even though they've been taught. And it's heartbreaking. And you just want to go out there and say, whoa, whoa, turn back, turn back, turn back, because you're headed down a path. But, you know, there's not anything that I can do about it. They're not going to listen until they're ready to listen. And that's going to be an act of God that's going to have to happen. And so, um, you know, for me, this, these words are pretty encouraging because it reminds me that, I, that my job is to continue to walk in obedience of the Lord Jesus Christ, to, to live the teachings that he, that he taught, um, to do the things that Holy Spirit asks me to do or commands me to do, um, and then to let all of the rest of the chips fall where they may. And let God be God for other people and um, let him be my God. And I'm only responsible for me. I'm not anybody's God. I'm not anybody's savior. I'm not, I'm just an instrument of, um, of God's uh, work in the world, just as you are. And, um, and I have a, I have, I have a prayer. I, ha I have prayer that I can lift up. And I know that God hears those prayers. Um, I love that despite Jotham's um, lack of success in getting the people to turn from their corrupt ways, he continued to do the right thing. He continued to to build. He continued to um, contribute positively to the world. Um, and he was blessed. Um, and, um, and, and he became powerful uh, because he lived in the ways of the Lord. So these are some great words for us today as well. All right, so let's go to the Lord in prayer, and I'll give you just a few updates. Emily was able to go home. Um, we want to continue to pray for her as she heals, and uh, the same for their for her daughter Addie. Um, but thank you so much for those prayers. I know Amy Kitzmiller really appreciates those as well. 
Um, we want to continue to pray for Allison, who has breast cancer and will be having a double mastectomy. We want to continue to pray for Vicki, who has squamous cell carcinoma. This is a friend of um, one of our church members, Polly. And um, then we want to continue to pray for the young man, Tom Ed, whose lungs are full of blood clots. Um, we want to pray. He's got a, a blood condition. And so we want to pray for him. We want to continue to pray for Gail Hendershot, who's been having some health issues. We want to continue to pray for those who grieve, the Hutchinson family and the Mascaro family. Um, we want to pray for them as well. And then we want to continue to lift up those who have been impacted by all of these storms all around the nation. Um, and we want to pray a hedge of protection around us as there are, um, you know, potential storms throughout the spring season. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you for your love, for your constant companionship, for your constantly nudging us to walk in your ways and for showing us how to do that through your word. Father, I pray that you will help us to be faithful to you in all things. I pray today that as we come to worship, that our attention will be fully on you, that we won't be concerned about what we will do this afternoon or what the week ahead brings or what happened over the weekend, but instead that our attention will be fully on you and that we will feel refreshed and renewed by the power of your Holy Spirit that pulses throughout our bodies and throughout our churches that will um, will will shape us and will change us, will convict us, will lead us. And Father, we pray for pastors. I pray for Pastor Teresa. I pray for all of us who will be in pulpits across the, the globe today. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will speak through each one of us to your people, delivering a message of hope and peace and even instruction. And Father, I pray that each heart will know that it is not um, a lecture or anything like that, but rather it is just simply your message to each and every one of us. And Father, we just praise you and thank you for the opportunities that we have to serve you. We pray, Lord, that you will keep us from uh, laziness, from um, walking in fear rather than courageously walking in your ways. We pray, Lord, that you will open up new opportunities and that you will expand our territory and that you will help us to be able to reach more for you, that more will hear the gospel message, more will know your love, more will come to be faithful to you. And Father, we have so many things going on in the world around us that we need your guidance. We pray, Lord, for the safety of students all across this nation who are on campuses going through finals this week. And um, we just pray, Lord, that you will protect them and in the midst of all of the riots that are going on. Father, we pray that you will um, that you will be with our, our world leaders, our, our na national leaders, and that you will help them to um, fight more for peace than they do for their own agendas, for their own um, uh, gain. We pray, Lord, that you will just somehow bring peace and order to all of the situations that are chaotic in the world around us. And we pray, Lord, that you will protect those who are innocent those who um, who follow you yet are persecuted, those who are who are just trying to 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 go and do the things that you've called them to do, and yet they struggle so much at the hands of other people. Father, we praise you and thank you for we know that you are always with us. We know that we don't have anything to fear because you're always with us. You love us and you're protecting us. Today, Lord, we ask that you will also be with those who are sick. We pray, Lord, that your healing hands will be upon them. We pray, Lord, that, that your comforting arms will be wrapped around those who grieve. And Father, we just praise you. We trust you with whatever action you bring. Hear us now as we pray together the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God, you call us to walk alongside the poor, all the while reminding us of our own poverty and spirit. Grant us courage to cry out against injustice. Grant us burdened hearts that ache to see the enemies of hunger, violence, and economic injustice scattered. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ go with you wherever he may lead you today. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storms. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he will show you. May he bring you home rejoicing right back here in the morning. Everyone have a wonderful Sunday. I love you guys and I will look forward to seeing you in the morning, if not before. Take care.